weight back in at nine. JV and WT still there in that comfortable. We still are. And seventh frame, eight frames in this first session. Four sessions, three eights and a nine, the final session. First to 17, of course, will be the winner of this match. And Peter Ebden, three each, started to play. Caught it a bit too thick, but his main aim was to find a path for the cue ball back to the balk end. Matthew Stevens, of course, was in the semi-final last year when he lost 17-15 to John Higgins. So he knows all about semi-finals and all about long, hard battles. And this match already looks as though it's got the makings of being one of those. what we're saying about his growing confidence and nicely on the black. <coughs> Obviously a long match, won't be worrying times, but he looked as though he could have won this session, this first session of eight, quite comfortably. He'd be disappointed if he loses it. <coughs> Nine. Well, he obviously misjudged the positional shot off the last black. He rolled that red in, but he couldn't get on a colour. And that's end of break. After the initial opening red, he'll be disappointed. We've only got nine points. He crept in nine. Peter Ebden, six. Well, that was careless. Such a big target. No danger of leaving anything. And how vital those six points could be at the end of this frame. Peter trying to be a little bit too clever there, I think. Uh, if he had it replaced, he could have left touching ball where he could have put Matthew in trouble. Matthew now can open this pack of reds. But Peter's going to have to be very careful now with his next safety. He didn't want the kiss on the brown. He was going to have to be very careful with his next safety. And look what's happened. The only good thing that's happened there is push the pink safe. Almost caught this right. He wasn't far off playing it perfectly, but knocking the pink safe is definitely in his favour because this would have been a good chance for Matthew. He'll do well to score with pink and black out of play. 
Juan. Well, he was looking for this red near Six. the top cushion, but such was the potting angle on the blue, he was always going to go close to the cushion. There you see, it's straight. Well, the fact he's coming round here to have a look, this black, well, he must be on into the left corner. Yes, I must admit, to first impression it didn't, but once he walked round, it definitely must be, but... I don't want to be playing this too slow because he's then going to have to cut the black back in. And this is a big shot. Seven. This is almost saying I'm going to be 4-3 in front or possibly 4-3 behind after this shot. Big shot to play. It clearly goes. And the thing is, he just concentrates on the pot. He'll be carrying into a red, which will keep the cue ball at this end. But this is a tough shot. It's there. Well, good pot. And he's on a red into the opposite corner. 14. I don't know, he's going to have to play this red very slowly. I thought he was just hop straight, but he was straight, so now he's been able to control the cue ball properly. This is a good chance. I thought that cue ball was going away from the black, but it wasn't. And now he's cleared the black spot. And all the reds in open play. 22. And Peter and that last safety shot is going to cost him the frame, 22. I think. Yes, Willie, as you said, when he first came to the table, Matthew, it didn't look like it, but it just shows you that black just went. It was a brave shot to play 30. the black, and now the frame at his mercy. For every credit, 31. he's taken them well. but just hope that somehow Matthew makes a mistake in the next two or three minutes. If he doesn't, he gets the winning line. Remember, he took the blue off the first red and then got onto that very difficult black, and from then on, a few shots later, he's got everything in open play. It's been an excellent break, this. Forty-six. Just gone a little bit awkward here. If he can find a gap to stun up for the blue, because I don't think he can play for the black here. Well, judge the cannon to perfection. It's a type of shot that could have gone wrong. But now it's gone right, he's back on track. Fifty-five. Can you? Well, that was a bad contact. Yeah. 
he smiled, but that 62. wasn't a smile that meant he was pleased with anything. He's got a tough shot now to clinch this frame. To be honest with you, the last few shots, he gets a good position, then he runs out of it. He needs this one. Oh, tremendous pot. 63. There was a lot of pressure on that. That was a great shot, that was. And now he's just looking for this black and one more red. Oh! oh. Matthew Stevens, well. 63. Can you believe it? After the shot in the middle, well, we've all done it. You've put that tough shot in the middle, he's come on the black, he thought, right, I've done the hard work and forgot about the black. Could this be another turning point frame that he looked like certain to win? One. Very, very similar circumstances, a clearance needed by Peter Ebden to pinch the frame. He'll do well to clear from here. But he'll certainly get back into the frame, I think. Six. <coughs> Seven. I know it's the first session and it's 33 frames, but if he loses this one in a similar fashion to the fifth frame this evening... 12. Little doubts creep in your mind. And for Peter, well, he'd be over the moon if he could pinch this frame. As you say, well, he's got it all to do, but... I'm sure he's just glad to have the chance. shot just about got on it so it's potable eating they're inspectant here to wonder what's going to happen would it be Ebden's frame or would it be Stevens it's still in the balance Well, he's took the ball by the horns here because he's played for this slightly more difficult round to get it back onto its own spot. Now, if this goes right, the only difficult shot is going to be pink to black because you'd fancy him going from brown to blue without a problem in a few moments' time. It just depends what angle he can get on that pink to whether he plays an easy black. 23. Now, this has been a very good break from Peter Ebron. He looks very nervous. I wonder if he's had a bet on the outcome of the frame score. He's been jumping around for quite some time. 25. <coughs> 28. Now, this is one of the key shots. Brown to blue, angle on the blue to get on the pink. Can't afford to go off more than one cushion to play position on this pink because he was not guaranteed to get perfect so he needs to be right up on this blue yes good shot perfect 32. well John do you screw in behind the back of the black or do you just stun it down and play the half ball pink well I think he tried to get to the right hand cushion but I don't think he can screw direct Matthew Stevens his second favourite for this frame now frame another one he looks certain to win 
And his screw director's got a stun to the bolt cushion with right hand side. He's screwed direct. <laughs> well, 37. If you could think of the worst place to finish, that would have been it. It didn't look as though he had the angle. Obviously, if he flicks the black, he'd have held the cue ball, the pink would have been easy. Only the snooker now, John. I don't think this will pot. Just stun it and leave the white where the pink is, send the pink up and down. Peter Abdon, <laughs> Well, he may have got the snooker, he may not, will he? Well, he has. But will he get a better chance than that to win this frame? Thanks, Matthew. <coughs> Obviously, Matthew, it's not a difficult hit, this. But we know the problem of snookers, he's not hitting them. He's getting them safe. I think he's going to have to play this at pace, Johnny. Don't play it slow. He's going to have to try and leave six or seven feet distance between white and pink. I think it's two cushions, as hard as you like, and try and get the white in bulk, pink at the other end. That's what he's tried to do. Now, has he got away with it? Well, Peter Ebden has got another chance. Well, as you say, it's in hope, and he could have hoped for better than that. Easy pink, it's just a case of getting position on the black. for that pocket it's an excellent positional shot there's a bit more margin of error playing it for the right corner well that's how it gets some people I wonder if he's a Peter Ebden supporter I would think he is because it's Peter at the table Peter Ebden, from looking almost certain to go 4-1 behind at one stage, now takes the lead, 4-3. Ebden's one of only seven players to have compiled more than one 1-4-7 one, break in professional competition. The others are Nick Dyson, Cliff Thorburn, Stephen Hendry, James Wattener, Ronnie O'Sullivan, and John Higgins. Amongst the current top 16, only Jimmy White, Alan McManus, and Stephen Hendry have made more crucible appearances. Ebden has appeared there on 10 consecutive occasions. Just missed the break off from Peter Ebden, he's left his shot to nothing. But these are very worrying times. I know it's the first session of four, but Matthew Stevens has had two frames stolen off him that he should have won. So really, he should be 5-2 in front at the moment. And he's 4-3 behind. And this is the last frame of this session as we see the shot to nothing going again. I think this is a big frame. I think Stevens needs to win this one, not to be a little annoyed with the way things have gone this evening. Fifteen. 
which not very often in matches you make a break of 63 and lose a frame, but that's what happened 22. to Matthew Stevens in the last frame. Yep. The other frame he had pinched off him, he made a break of 40. So he scored 103 points in two frames and lost them both. Twenty-three. Got a perfect angle now as Peter Ebden looks on to go into the right-hand side of the cluster. He's bound to be on the other red. So he needs to hit the two reds that are directly behind that other red there, full ball. Well, he's hit them half ball. He's still on it. Still on it. But he's pushed another couple of reds out, so this is a good 30. chance. We'll just have a look what's available. So I'm just thinking it's a funny game, Snooker, because on the long potting and break building this evening, I think Matthew Stevens has been, well, the better player. And to uh, Look at it now, Willie, and he's 4-3 down. It's hard to believe, really, isn't it? He's got more confident around the table. He's potted, to me, the better long shots. Yes, I think Peter's just been pinching frames, where Matthew is... 39. Uh, Google, it doesn't make any difference, but he's still actually scored <coughs> more points than Peter. But, uh, you know, Peter's just been really getting what Matthew's missed. He's not done an awful lot on his own. There's a choice here. He could go into the little cluster again, or he could play for the loose red. Well, he should have stunned into them, not screwed into them, because now he's going to have to pull out a good pot. He may once again re regret that, because if he 46. misses, the chance of another counteract from Ebden. attack for a possibility should he miss this. But he could play as a shot to nothing, could, could back down for the black if he wanted to cover everything up. Well, he tried to dig in to try Thank and cover Stevens. things up and uh, once again Peter Adam comes to the table having left an easy opportunity. Matthew Stevens, as we've said before, has made breaks of 40, lost the frame. 63 lost the frame. He's made 46 here. But it cost him this frame. that pot in such a way that well maybe if a bit thinner he'd have found the bolt line he's left Peter Ebden an easy safety shot or a cut on this red but I can't see the cuts the shot it's an easy safety you know he's going for it he's going for it and he's got it it was one of them, if you just overcut it, undercut it, you'd have left it in the pocket. It was a very good pot. Well, most players wouldn't refuse going into the pink here because...
this would really hurt Matthew Stevens if he went on to win this frame again for the third time this evening. If he plays for loose red, he's not guaranteed to get perfect. He'd be very unlucky if he goes into the pink not to spread them far and wide. That pace. Why on earth at that pace when there was when they were loose anyway? Six. I can understand the kiss, John, but just push them push them around. I've never seen so many balls move in one shot. <coughs> well, he's just about on this red. Didn't have to do anything with the cue ball. I think it was over the middle pocket. So a great opportunity to get right back in this frame. To win it at this visit. It's a tall order. He must be getting more and more confidence, Peter Ebden. 13. First four frames this evening looked out of sorts to me. But now he looks back in the zone, as he calls it. 14. <coughs> Well, I've never seen a session like this for quite some time where a player has dominated the session. There's a possibility now that he could lose the session 5-3 and he's been the aggressor in virtually every frame. I can't remember any frame 21. where Ebden's got in first and, and got into the lead. He's come from behind virtually every frame. <coughs> Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Positional shot. I thought a few moments ago it would be tough to clear after he played that shot from blue into the pack because he pushed a lot of reds towards the cushion, he pushed the black out of commission. He doesn't have to worry about the black, he can play these four reds and four pinks because the black, he doesn't want to be rolling that in along the cushion at the moment. There's a Ebden fan, I'm sure. I think he's possibly had a little bet on a 5-3 result Ebden tonight. He's been very nervous whenever Ebden's at the table. If he has had a bet on Peter winning the session tonight, I hope he's not had a bet on him winning the match because he's two sessions, four sessions to go. I don't think he could stand the strain. Now, where's the cue ball going? Where's the cue ball going? Is he on this red? 40.
Yes, he is. Nearly drifted past the black. Forty-one. So he pots the pink, and he goes one point in front. This is the key shot. If he's got an angle to go up to blue or pink, he's in the frame, of course, without that final black. He'd ideally love to get on the blue, but I don't know whether he can hit it hard. You know, he doesn't want to really make this red hard by playing at a pace. Fifty-four. Well, he's tried so hard to get to the the blue, but he's he's going to have to swing the cue ball now around the back of the green, or go in between brown and yellow and get on the yellow in the opposite corner. Choice of shots, and he's decided on the more difficult positional shot, but played it perfectly. That could be framed. Fifty-nine. Sixty-one. <coughs> Sixty-four. Just the brown. And, and it's, also it's the first session of four. I do feel that Matthew Stevens has let Peter Ebden off the hook here slightly. 73. Ever since the fifth frame, when Matthew looked as though he was going to go 4-1, he led 3-1. But Peter has won the last four frames and ends this first session 5-3 in front. A little bit of a surprise, but Peter Ebden will be very, very happy. <clears throat> yes, he found a nice gap there. But now he needs a good positional shot off this blue. He's got a nice angle to play in and out of Bork. Well, he's on this red to the left corner. And certainly the lights have been a Six. little bit closer to it. And it'd be lovely if he could play for the black, get the black on its spot. <coughs> Just depends how he is on this red, but if he's on this red in such a way he can drop on the black and then pot the black, this could be a great chance. And he's got the nice angle. But it just shows, you see, this is how certain players Seven. play the game. He preferred to rely on his technique and push the cue through firm rather than play a delicate little shot. And that's because he's feeling the pressure and that's how he copes with it, if you like. He'd rather play a full shot than a half shot. A bit like my golf, my chipping. I'd rather it one hard than delicate. And he potted it really clean. And as I say, that's, if he's going to make a frame-winning contribution here, he needs to get that black into play. When will he take the chance to play for it? 13. He 
he's got to go up and down again. But with the colours not on their spots, there's all the room in the world to do that. Eighteen. And of course, with his last pot ready, open the pink. Nineteen. It's not a great opportunity. And now he's got the pink on its spot and freely available into corner in centre pockets. Peter Ebden. 25. That safety mistake could be very costly. extension a lot does Matthew rather than use the rest that's an extra bit of reach 26 and it has to be said he he plays it really well you notice he left the the smaller but on the bought cushion of course if the cue ball would have run down and hit that it'd have been a foul shot he's the only one I've ever seen who leaves it on the table Well, he assumes he's not going to miss. 31. I assume he's played for a plant here into the left corner. As you can see, dead set. I was mentioning a while ago about it'd be lovely to get the black on the spot. He doesn't. He won't need it now. He's got the pink available into, and that's of course the advantage of the pink: two centre pockets, two corner pockets. Loose reds. 44. This is a bit different to the last frame. 45. Once again, refused to play for the black because obviously he's firing it along the cushion. It's a little bit tight, but he's not come perfect on the pink. So it's the blue. A bit of work to do with the cue ball. Well, OK, he may have thought that the green made it a big pocket, but any snooker player would have played that blue into the middle. All right, the, pink, uh, the green helped, and he knew that could happen if he was wide on the left-hand side. So it wasn't as lucky as maybe you probably thought at first. Well, tried to get the black into play, but uh, covered it with the red that he can. And yes, I think he made his mistake on the red before he potted the blue. He was perfect on that Green red. Ball. He should have played for the black then. Matthew Stevens, fifty-one. He's 52 points in front, but there's still a possible 67 left on the table. Peter Ebden isn't out of this yet. Ebden hasn't uh, got Stevens under any pressure with that safety, though.
here Stevens with the dreaded rest. He doesn't dread it quite so much as our old friend John Spencer used to dread it, John. World champion three times. Yes, yeah, funny enough, I was talking to Cliff Thorburn today and we were saying in, in our day, I, I don't know, all these accessories we used to use, we was frightened to death of them, you know. But nowadays, all shots seem to come alike to these young stars. Not a bad shot, but it's not really a telling safety. The only thing Peter Ebden will have to be a little bit wary of, if he plays this red near the right hand side of the table, he, he doesn't cross double it across the table and maybe knock the black in. I'm sure he's aware of that. Good shot. It might not yield a chance, but the thing is he's made it difficult now for Matthew to play a good safety shot because of the length of the cue ball. And with the black developed in this safety exchange and therefore potable from more or less anywhere on the table, if Ebden can manage to pot an initial red, there would be a chance of winning clearance. Well, you can see it's probably ticking over here. There's a possible pot on a red into the right corner. It's not a shot for nothing. It's a shot you, if you're confident, you take on. If he pots it, he's certain to be on the black. And I think he's taking her on. This is a big shot. If he misses this, he loses the frame. <coughs> Played it with confidence. Well, surely he's not sneaking himself for the black. One. Wow, how unlucky is that? Committed to this pot, knew it wasn't a shot for nothing, in it went, and that tells you all. Unlucky. It may be possible to pot the black by playing cushion first. Yes, I think it is, Clive, but... He's not certain to pot it, it's a little bit away from the pocket. He's using all the extension, so it's not as if he's close in there like to it. And if he did pot it, he may not be guaranteed to be on a red. If that red hadn't have been there, it'd have been simple. Just drop the black in, no problem. So he's played one good shot. He needs another now. Played. It'll be interesting now to see. He, he played it slow. So when the black spotted, is he on a red? Eight. Yes, he is. But off this red, can he guarantee position on the colour? If he can get this right, this could be a chance. Tough one, but a chance. Nine. Played for pink. Coming through the second ball, which is the black. Stevens knows there's a possible clearance on now. Good shot. I was saying earlier in this frame when 15. Matthew Stevens played a shot firm that when the little bit of tension on, he prefers to hit them solid. I've noticed with Peter when the pressure's on, he doesn't mind rolling a ball. 
You've got every chance to go in the pocket. And he's got a chance now to win this frame. Sixteen. Not ideal. <coughs> Straight it would have been better. Yeah, it's a disappointing positional shot, that, in, in the way that he could have played for pink or black. So being low was a sin, really. <laughs> Safely in, though. 22. And with the next red straightish, from not too far away, it's not too complicated to keep the brake going. Yes, if it wasn't for the fact he's using the rest, I'd give him this, but not using the rest. It, 23. but not clean, and he's not perfect on the pink. He's at the wrong angle. If he was straight on the pink, it'd be a formality just to pot it, screw back for the red in the left corner. Can he hold for this last red? Just seeing where he would finish if he just cannoned into the black. A pot to go for. But as we always see with difficult pots, he concentrated that much on the pot, he overscrewed. And he's not on this red. Not ideal anyway. <coughs> this is a very awkward cutback to the right corner. Because it is a cutback, it's bound to be a fair amount of speed on the cue ball. It refused it. Twenty nine. Ebden doesn't lack boldness, but uh, there he refrained from going. For what he thought was one too many. Well, it looks as though the safety shot was the right <coughs> choice. Poor safety shot from Matthew. He's left a chance of this red, this red, any colour, and the six remaining colours. And a frame that. Matthew Stevens looks as though he was going to win. This could be one of these crucial frames that just turn a match. One. Well. He's just run a touch too far. If he was a little bit straighter on the green, wouldn't have been a problem. But to, I don't think he can just roll it in. I think that's why he's looking at the blue. Well, this is a big shot on the blue. If he's straight, he'll go for this left corner pocket and screw back. You see, if he, if he was in his club on the practice table, he'd play the green 
and use a lot of left hand side but on these super fine cloths if you can play if you have a choice between playing a shot with side and isn't it plain no. ball you pick the plain ball shot and that's why he's playing the blue but it's more difficult than the green Very cool there. <coughs> Peter's concentrate. It always amazes me these type of auditions. One person coughs and it seems everybody gets a coughing fit. Quiet please. This is a big frame. Struggle with him, eleven. Fifteen. Too far, but if you're going to be wrong side of the blue, it's better be much too far. In and out of ball for the pink. <coughs> that cue ball needs to slow up a bit. Twenty. Well, he's on it. He still needs pink and black. He's making a little bit hard work of this, is Peter. Good shot on the pink, perfect on the black. This for the frame. Yeah. A lot of grit, a, in the frame. a lot of resolve. Peter Ebden wins the frame on the black to level at 13 all. If Stevens hadn't lost so many frames from well in front, he would be in a commanding position. In the opening session, he lost two from almost 50 in front, another from more than 60 in front. In the second session, he lost one from 73 nil. And uh, in the previous frame, he was 50 in front. But he's playing one of the game's great battlers. Yes, and Peter's had a very close look at this. I think he thinks it could be a three ball plant into the right corner. Well, <coughs> he was having such a close look at the three ball, three balls. I thought they were going to the right corner in the end. I'm not quite certain what he played. But I'll tell you what, he'll be very pleased after the last frame. Probably in the... He might have a slight edge now, confidence-wise, over Matthew. <coughs> of course, when you get in the final session of one of these matches, every frame is so important has its own little story to tell. Does it boost one player? Does it upset another? And that was a type of frame that I'm certain Peter Ebden thought he'd lost. And what a bonus to win it. Trying to get behind brown and yellow.
good length. And the reds are widespread. There's a red on here, second from the left. A little tap on the table from Matthew. Appreciating the good safety. I can't see a safety for Matthew. I think he'll be forced into going for this red. It's risky. But it's easier than a safety. Well, the only thing good about that is that Stevens has put the black safe. Colours to play for, pink tied up, black tied up. But why it's a slightly better chance than normal, <clears throat> obviously you've got to keep getting the right Six. side of the blue. But he's got that comfort that if he doesn't, there's a red in the bork end. So if he ever needed it, that red would be there. Just being careful, he doesn't catch the black. Seven. So this time he's not got the right angle on the blue. And as I say, he's he's got that red in the ball, Ken. Should he need to play for it? Get someone tall sat in front of you, don't you? Thirteen. Couldn't avoid the cannon on the yellow, so Seven. didn't know exactly where the cue ball was going. Yes, and he's going to need a good shot here to keep this going. He can't just roll his in because he'll cannon the red on the top cushion. If he tries to stun round with two cushions, he's got to find a gap here. Could finish on nothing. And he's trying to find that gap. Concentrating more on that than the pots. That was a disappointing end. <laughs> well overcut that. One. That was a good pot from Matthew. <laughs> to play it with pace and when the cue ball's near the cushion that's not simple. <coughs> well, careless positional shot. Peter Hebden immediately looks Six. up, looks at Matthews. And the reason he looks at Matthew, because what a player does, he looks at the other player's body language. Needs a good pot here. Seven. Well, he didn't try to do too much with the cue ball. He by just potting it beyond the green. But he hasn't recovered the situation. OK, he's on the green and the next red is easy to follow. He's going to have a job clinching this frame, unless he can get the pink in play or something like that. Needs a good shot now. Only the blue to play for, so he's going to have to 
Well, I imagine stun it round if you can. <coughs> Deep screw made a pretty good attempt. <coughs> That's improved his position, although he's still not got the pink into play. 16. 17. And he has that red in the ball, Ken, so if he does get in trouble on the blue, wrong side, and, for example, here, a bit too straight on the blue, but it helps, he's got that red in the ball, Ken. He'd have liked to have saved it there, but he might have to play for it now, and he is doing, off the green. When the cue ball has got to travel significant distances, Stevens's easy cue power is such an advantage. You can hit the ball pretty hard without losing any accuracy. He develops the pink at last. That could be the frame winning shot. 26. And they realise it. Pink's in play nicely on the next red. 27. One. Stevens hasn't won this frame yet. Well, particularly not now. What a careless positional shot that was. Forty seven. That pink could be a saviour for Peter Ebden. As you see, it's on the spot, he's not touching the cue ball. Well, we say he doesn't like using the rest. How is he? Touch the pink, remember? Oh, tremendous pot. He'll settle for that. And he's on the brown. Well played. 48. Thirty-five points in front. Well, you can't see him getting a block 52. off this red, so he needs red colour and one more red. Another rest shot. Stop saying he's not very good 53. with the rest, Clive, because that was an excellent pot, excellent position. He needs the pink and one more red to clinch this frame. Couldn't get really close on the red he needs, though. 59. Hebden, very <laughs> interested in this one. This is frame ball. But if he pots it, he certainly wins the frame. Excellent. 60. And what was also in his favour was that the black, which Ebden needed, was safe. Yeah, 
He's having to think, but he has lost a frame where Peter Ebden needed a couple of snookers, so yes, took up Back behind the yellow. 60. Should be enough. 43 in front, 35 on the table. That should be 14-13 to Stevens. That was indeed enough for Stevens to regain the lead. But as we pick them up in the next, it's Ebden fighting back, as he always does, on a break of 35. That looked Peter very Abden, dangerous. 35. He had to hit that very thin. <clears throat> I wonder whether Stevens might risk rolling the one red onto the other. Well, it is a risk, Clive, but he's 17 points behind, so maybe it's worth it, and that's what he's playing. Good shot, one confidently played. Give himself a great chance now to clinch this all important last frame before the mid session interval. Big chance. Eight. Nine. Ebden knows that his fate in this frame is in his opponent's hands. Key shot coming up. 16. If Stevens gets well on the black. 17. Will be a very heavy odds on favourite. <laughs> 24. Well, Peter, he's going to have another sip of water. The next one I think you'll have is in his dressing room because I don't think you'll come back to the frame. Uh, the table now in this frame. He's got a perfect angle on the yellow, stun the yellow in. The only thing is he is overstretching. He'd rather overstretch than use the rest, but he is at full stretch here. And a long distance between his hand and the cue ball. But as we said before, he plays that shot so well. 26. Nine points in front. Green, brown and blue for the frame, and a big frame. A frame which could put Ebden two behind. Twenty-nine. Thirty-three. Just have to make sure of the blue. Thirty-one. Stevens within two frames of the winning post. He leads by fifteen frames to thirteen at the mid-session interval. More champions GP and Steve Davis along the way. Now it's been nip and tuck since it started in our second semi-final. 24-year-old Matthew Stevens found himself trailing by two frames at the end of the first couple of sessions, 3-5 in the first and then 7-9. But this morning he turned things around, winning five of the eight frames on offer to put this match on a knife edge. It was 12 all coming into this evening's concluding session. Now they've been playing for about two hours now and in that time Stevens has forged ahead by 15 frames to 13 and he needs two frames more. We're going to join it live. Clive Everton and John Virgo are watching from the commentary box.
so. The entry of the gladiators. Peter Ebden and Matthew Stevens. With Stevens within two frames of a place in tomorrow's final. Yes, and it's been very tense in the first four frames this evening, and most of them could have gone I either give way. 29. Matthew Stevens to break. There's a lot of tension out there. This match isn't over yet by a long chalk. One area in which uh, Stevens has had the advantage has been in break making. He's made 15 breaks over 50 to Ebden's nine. But Ebden is the grittiest of competitors. And uh, he could still pull through to a place in the final. Foul, the miss. Matthew Stevens for. Well. Better too thin than too thick, I suppose. Too thin being no contact at all. After due consideration, Stevens asks the cue ball to be replaced. You could see that. situation as Peter Ebden saying that it was a bit closer to the cushion and closer to the cushion just makes the queuing a little bit awkward that's how honest these players are yes and it didn't need to be all that thin in the end that shot was to screw the cue ball back to the ball ken which he's done and you trust to look where the red you played goes but he's covered it you mentioned the breaks this evening Clive but the one thing that's disappointed me about Peter Ebden this evening is his safety play he's had a low percentage of good safety shots and if you leave your opponent well in the middle of the table as he's left Matthew it's either an easy pot if there's one on or an easy safety Out, all out for the pot, misjudged it. Just potable, but caught the edge of a second red. Neither 
has Ebden had a high percentage with that sort of shot. Which he played clearly in the expectation that he was going to get it because he made no attempt to get the cue ball back into Bork. Using the bunch as a stopper. <laughs> Getting the cue ball somewhere near the bought cushion. Sixty-four seats at the Crucible, and a uniquely intimate atmosphere. Well, it just shows you he played a similar shot a few shots ago. As I say, you're never certain where the ball you played is going to go, and he's clipped the black away. And left this red, stun it in, can play for the black in the same pocket. And I'm sure that's the shot. To play back up for the pink, you need a lot more pace. What can Peter Ebden make of this reasonable chance? Didn't take your advice, John. Played with considerable power to get back for pink or possibly blue. Ebden has to win four of the remaining five frames to go through to the final. Since he was 8-4 down, Stevens has, as it were, won 11-5. It's not straightforward, and I think the problem he didn't play for the black a few shots ago is that there's a red. If the potted the black, it'd be unavailable into both corners. 40. Well, he's played a stun run through there. That was a strange reaction from the cue ball. Tough pink this. He's getting down to play it very quickly, but this is missable. Shot, particularly 
with the added pressure of the match situation. Were he to lose, he would be three down with four to play. Twenty-one. Another terrific pop from Peter. He's missed a few shots just recently, uncharacteristically for him. And what can happen, particularly in pressure situations like this, you, you miss a few shots and because you didn't cue it well, you may be snatched or didn't get the, the cueing arm going through. And maybe Peter is just... 28. Now, trying to shake that off. He's playing with a little bit more pace around the table. Just got past the pink spot. A little bit of work to do here with the cue ball. Forty-two. Deep screw. Played it well. Straighter would have been ideal. <coughs> well, he used that red on the side cushion to 48. hold the cue ball at this end. He may even elect to play that red, he's just cannoned. Because the red he's got to the right corner, he's going to be running into other reds, no guarantee of position. If he plays the red into the far left corner, stun it in, on the blue. This is the easier pot, but not guaranteed position on the colour. 49. Stevens uh, starting to take a big interest now that Hepton's run out of position. It was the wrong shot. Luck had to be on his side to get good position there, going into all those reds. Yes, he really took the easy way out. It's understandable in these situations, but having done it, he may be wishing he played a different red. Send a break. At least he didn't miss a pot, and he's got a chance of playing a good safety. And the 45-point lead is a pretty good one.
Needs to run on a bit. She grimaces. The red is cuttable to the middle. thing that could have happened for Peter, is it? That was so thin, it's hardly moved, but worst of all... Settle down, please, thank you. He's brought the black into play. It was thin, but it wasn't as thin as he played it, and he's been a little bit fortunate in the respect that the only red he's left on, it's not got an ideal potting angle. The only advantage for Matthew is the pink is near the far right corner pocket. So if he could pot this red, odds are he could pot the pink. Needs to pot this though. He's played it in the corner. It's there, great pot. Great pot, and he's on the pink. Well, that was just the difference. Pop to middle was easier, but the pot to corner was the shot to play. Seven. For positional reasons. Eight. Well, big frame now. I'm certain. Well, a few shots ago that Matthew thought he'd lost this frame. 14. It gone beyond recall. He's got a chance now to 15. go within one frame of a place in the final. Peter had his chance. Got into that a bit too much. Yes, Clive, you just get the feeling the old adrenaline is uh, getting a bit too much pace in these shots. Oh. Uh, I didn't Thank expect him to miss the pink. 18. So the chance he had to clinch this frame has now gone, and I think he's going to lose it. Extra degree of difficulty produced by an imprecise positional shot. One. And only red and colour needed now. Seven. Stevens resigned to losing this frame when he had a chance to steal it. Eight. Yes, what a big miss that could be for Matthew Stevens. Peter's won the frame now. Easy black. To drop on this last red and it was noticeable to me that Pete Redden came out with a lot more aggressive 15. attitude his pace around the table if it had lost this frame that would definitely have slowed him down but not now he's got the result he wanted Peter Redden 15 42 in front and the frame snooker behind the black <coughs> Stevens concedes Edden Reduces the gap to a single frame, but still trails by 15 frames to 14. 
Yes, it's all getting very twitchy now, Steve. You've noticed a few j jittery shots from the guys, haven't you? Well, there have been, and it's understandable. We, we were treated to some excellent snooker in the other semi-final, and this uh, semi-final, no two are ever alike. So for that reason, I think this proves uh, what the Crucible can do to anybody, both desperate to get into the final, of course. Absolutely, yes. And, John, the way you're seeing it, what does Matthew have to do? Because it must be preying on his mind. He's been 3-1 up in this match. Suddenly he's been hauled back. And every time Peter Evans seems to produce something from nowhere. Yeah, but he had a great chance in the last frame that he's just overscrewed the red. Mr. Pink, he should have got. Got himself back in the frame. He's just got to be a little bit more composed in the balls. And it's very difficult to say now because it really is the twitching hour. Thank you, One free minute. Peter Evans to Brent. Winning that frame will be a great encouragement to Ebden. And something of a depressant for Stevens, who knows that he had a great chance to win it. Attempted this long red in the expectation of getting it because he left the cue ball short of the ball line. And indeed, he has potted that shot an awful lot in this match. Useful shot. Ebden's got to be careful to cover the red nearest the right corner. Matthew looking, there, there is this red, but it's a thin cut to the right corner, but it's not one you'd want to play. You'd be kissing the red near the top cushion, you wouldn't have a clue where the cue ball's going. So why take a risky pot on and no guarantee of a reward? So it's safety off this red, but he's got to catch it thin. Not as thin as that. Oh, miss. Peter Abdon for. Now, the thing is, miss call, but the old rule was before the miss, play it again. And that's what Peter said play it again, but from where you are now. And I presume, Clive, because I'm just asking myself the question, a lot of people may be wondering, if he'd have missed the ball again then, he wouldn't have been warned about three misses because it was in a different place, I presume, the cue ball. 
Now, if you can get uh, a direct shot at the uh, at the ball on, uh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yes, when Ebden asked him to play from the position left, the three misses and out rule wouldn't have applied. Could not one over the pocket here. Well, he nearly did. He's left a red. He played this in such a way that he didn't think he'd be leaving anything easy. Well, he hasn't. He's left a choice of a... Well, there's a red certainly into the right corner. But there's no guarantee... Guarantee of a colour. So just the safety shot. Safety shot from Peter Ebden. Nearly found the ball cushion. He's not done it enough for me this evening with his safety. But he's right back in there. Just one frame behind. First to 17, remember. Just rolling off the side cushion to the end red. I don't know how seriously that's going to restrict the angle at which uh, Ebden can play away. <coughs> there was still a fair sized gap to play through. Yes, but he didn't really want to kiss the yellow. Well, you can see there's a red to this right corner. The black's available in the opposite corner, but you've just got to work out the percentages, and the risk factor is too great. <coughs> that was a nice little kiss off the yellow, and if Peter can't get to the an angle on the red so he can come down the left-hand side of the table, and it doesn't look as though he can, He's got a problem here. He's got a big problem. Stevens yeah. Yes, within a fraction of an inch of uh, hitting a red, but it's quite right, the misrule in this instance, because slow is safe, a fraction too hard could be dangerous. Well, 
I don't think he can make his mind up whether he can see enough of this red to pot it in the right centre. He still can't make his mind. As you can see, if he could hit enough of it, he could clearly pot it. He needs to be sure. In it goes. So, you were quite right, Fly from Shredkin and getting out of that snooker just hit it a fraction too hard and that's what left that red on <coughs> well what a good positional shot this and that cue ball needs to bounce Hi. if it had just bounced an inch he could have potted this red and held for the black now he's going to have to come round off two cushions, play for pink or blue. Six. Captain hoping that Stevens isn't going to make too many here. But there are Twelve. at least three easy reds to come. Thirteen. To stay on the black here, so he's going to have to go up for the blue. It's okay as long as he gets a good angle on the blue. 21. That's perfect. Right, I think one of the three together in the middle of the table will go. Yep. It's shorter pace for that one, so red to the right center. That's for the cue ball to be clean, so maybe it wasn't the cleanest of contacts. But he's just not in perfect position now. Been a tremendous match and well it's getting near the winning line, but the tension's getting higher and higher. Right centre. Clean as a whistle. Nice angle on the blue. Still a good chance. Forty-nine. Which frees the red next to it. Fifty-four. Looking more and more likely that he's lost this frame. Fifty-five. This blue to go 60 points in front. So after this blue, a red and a black would be enough to leave Peter needing a snooker. 
if after the red he gets a, a blue, then he'll need two reds. You see it, 60 points in front, 75 remaining. 60. Pop this red and the black, and you go 68 points ahead with only 67 left. He's looking at the scoreboard. He's working that out in his mind. He should roll this red in and play for the black. No heroics needed from the black. Yes, but I was just going to suggest, Clive, as he's already lost a frame in this match when Peter Evans needs snookers, <coughs> it may be worth the risk in potting the black and playing a deep screw to try and open these four reds. Maybe the back red, or even the red next to it, will give him the extra insurance he needs. Well, he looks as though he may have a choice, but if he pots this red, surely the frame's clinched. And that's why he didn't 69. have to play the cannon. 69 points in front, only 59 left. Three snookers required for Peter Ebden. Make that five. 76. So Ebden knows that he's going to have to win the remaining three frames. Matthew Stevens, 76, and a frame. A break of 76, which takes Matthew Stevens 16 14 ahead and within one frame of a place in the final. Yes, one more required. How much will a fluent break like that have settled Matthew's nerves at this stage? Well, I don't know if he, it seems to be he's got no nerves in that one. It's very difficult mm. to see. When you, I, he looks very fresh to me. Um, and of all the players in the semi-finals, he's looked the least under pressure. I know it's very difficult to see what's going through somebody's mind. He certainly looks fresh, but, I mean, lovely feeling to get a 60 break and, and really look like you're hitting the ball positively at this frame, this time of the match, when it could easily go wrong and you could start twitching along with the other guy. At this point, John, how tiring is this mentally? Because the amount of mental stamina that's required to get through this championship is amazing. Um, at this moment, it's not very because you're just involved in the match. Mm. It's later on when you're finished. I mean, he's, you know, it's a really tough match when he when he's won, but he's, you know, obviously he's got a final to play, so he's got to pick himself up. But at the moment, when you're in there and you're focused, those things don't even enter your head. I don't suppose we should ever write Peter Ebden off, though. No, not at all. <laughs> no, no. But he's got obviously an uphill struggle for him. Uh, he does put a lot more into his game. Um, but the adrenaline will get them all through, really. I think uh, it's just a case of who's got the resolve. That last one, once again, the hardest to win. It is indeed, but I wonder whether Matthew Stevens will be so doing. Let's just talk about Matthew Stevens' record at this championship because it was a semi-final spot last year, and of course he was runner-up in the championship. What do you think he will have learned from that experience that he can take into this match? Well, the first thing to remember is it's like it's venues, Hazel. Some players really function at certain venues, not at others. And Matthew came here, you know, knowing full well that he can play so very well at the venue. He's done it the last couple of seasons and a final and a semi-final. So the place holds no fear for him. A lot of people come here and freeze when they get to the Crucible, but he loves the place and he's showing that in his form again this year. One more is all he needs, though. Yes, he certainly does. Against Mark Williams, he was 13-7 in front and was completely dominating the final. And all of a sudden, Mark Williams had an absolutely purple patch. Otherwise, we, we could have seen uh, Matthew as world champion a couple of years ago. And I just wonder whether there's a certain players come of age at a certain time. He's 24 now. He was about 22 when he came here uh, last time. Perhaps that was a little early. That would have been bordering on being the, uh, the youngest ever world champion. But perhaps 24, he's a bit more mature.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Frame 31. Matthew Stevens to break. Quiet now, please. Thank you. Out on the circuit, Stevens doesn't have the highest reputation as a clincher of apparently commanding leads. But I'm bound to say that uh, his confidence has never wavered in this match, even when he went behind. Poor safety shot from Peter. The bottom line is Peter's got to win the three remaining frames, as you say, Clive, but on his form this evening, that's a tall order because he's not played at his best. He's not made a break over 50 this evening. And this match was littered with 50 breaks and above all through it. And his safety play hasn't been as good as it should be. So there's going to have to be a complete swing round now to put any pressure on Matthew Stevens here, the way I see it. trying to say it's up to him to win it I think only Matthew Stevens can lose this match now unless Peter Ebden hits a vein of form far superior than anything he's shown so far this evening attempted that pop with extreme left of center striking to avoid counting another ball that in turn made the pop more difficult Stevens' his turn to be a bit short with the safety. It hasn't put Ebden <coughs> under any pressure. Trusted his pot in there, um, and his cannon into the second red was perfect. Well, by far and away the best shot he's played this evening. Will that give him the inspiration? I assume that Debden can get past the first red to make the potting angle if he wishes, but he prefers the red to left corner except for the awkward bridging. Oh, I don't know, Clive, at first look, maybe he just can't get through to it. Does he have to bend it slightly? I think he may have to just have to put a trace of left-hand side on the cue ball, which doesn't make it easy. And at this moment in time, 16-14 behind, first to 17, can't afford to make another mistake. 
He'd have preferred something easier than this. Nine. Very well played. And couldn't risk holding for black. Fifteen. The cannon on the bunch knocked another red into a potable position. Yes, he may have to cannon into him again here to hold the cue ball in the middle of the table. <coughs> well, he didn't, but he's just Wait. on this red. Cut back into the right corner. It's thin. Not quite certain where the cue ball will finish. 21. Peter Abden, 21. That looked pretty basic. Missed it by a long way, didn't he? Didn't really get into the jaws, and because he missed it by a long way, he's not got good position on the red he played for. That'll be the last thing in Peter's mind. He'll be wondering, as we are, how he could be so far away with the green. And as I say, he struggled tonight, I've got to be honest, and he'll be disappointed. This was a big match, set up, 12 frames apiece. And so far, he's not responded. to use the rest. Stevens one uses it pretty well. Yes, I can't remember a shot he's missed tonight with the rest. So all this about him not being a good rest player, I think we'll forget about that. And that was a brave shot. And the shot that could make it a possible frame and match clincher. A lot to do. A lot of Blue. pressure. And a big blue coming up. Well, how many times would he miss that? Matthew Stevens won. Hardly ever. The pressure's on. I think his thoughts may have been clouded by thinking, knock this in, and I've got a clear cut chance for frame and match. Two bad shots in a row from Ebden. First the green, and then a straight red, which at that range he shouldn't have missed, even with power. Yes, but this time he looks as though he's got away with it, so it won't be costly, but those misses will be preying on his mind.
Well, he's gone for this in the middle. But he knew it was a shot for nothing. He'd be leaving the cue ball near the ball cushion. Plenty of value, of course, should it have gone in with the blue all over the corner. Big trouble for Peter Ebden here. Reds are spread. Not an easy safety. It's going to be difficult to get back to the balk end. Well, what a time to get a fluke. The red he played in off a second red. And had it not dropped, he was leaving an easy starter for Stevens. The only bit of bad luck that Ebden had was to finish straight on that blue, which was the only Six. colour he could reasonably attempt. <clears throat> and from that distance, striking downwards, well, he did pretty well to screw back three inches. Yeah, well, he did have a slight angle. I think he just hit the blue too far. If he'd have hit it three-quarter ball on the right-hand side, the cushion would have helped the cue ball come back to this end of the table. He's still not out of the woods yet, even though he has fluked the red and potted the blue. Peter Ebden, six. Well, he'll settle for that. I think he's got a snooker on all reds. Shows you just that little run of the ball now. He's helping Peter Ebden. He's going through a bad time, but as I say, the run of the ball is helping. He's keeping him in this frame. Ebden has made two glaring mistakes, and yet is still 26 points in front. Stevens four. Completely mishit that. I do believe he was attempting the pot to the right corner, which was about three-quarter ball, but he hit it about a quarter ball. Matthew putting this down as though it was a putt at golf. But it's not this he wants in the hole, it's this red. But he played it in such a way he had check sides, so the only red he could leave, or he wouldn't stay at this end of the table if he played it with check side, made the pot more difficult. on, wondering whether Peter Ebden can stay in this match. He's got a red in the middle of the table that's possible. And good pot it was. Maybe the fact it was a shot for nothing, there was little pressure on it. But when you consider some of the pots he's missed, in comparison, that was a lot more difficult. <laughs> As you so rightly said, Clive, considering his mistakes, he's still 23 points in front. And under normal circumstances, you'd say, favourite for this frame. Yeah. I'm not saying he'll win it at this visit. 
but should get a few points more to his lead. But that was the shot where there was pressure. Now, surely he hasn't got away with this. He's struggling, Peter. He's struggling. He's hit a wall. Three blunders in one frame. One. And the way the Reds are set, Stevens could make it the last frame. Eight. Nine. All those hours and hours of practice and tonight he's not produced. It's hard to know what the reasons are for these situations. He's played so well up to this semi-final. 12 each, as I say, to start of the evening, set up for a grandstand finish. Hard to pick the winner. He's had his chances tonight, Peter. Matthew having to play this red in the far right corner, though. There's pressure on that. But in it goes. So he's back in perfect position. And now one point in front in this frame. 24. This match is now in his hands. Well, surely the reason that he didn't take the near red originally was because it wouldn't go or was, or was very tight. Well, you would have thought that, wouldn't you? And, and if he'd have gone a bit further up with the black, he could have had the one on the right. But it looks to me, Clive, as though it just goes. Maybe not all the pocket, but it just goes. Not the easiest black though, particularly for position. But made light of any difficulty. Thirty two. Thirty three. Forty-one. Well, he's obviously not on the black as he would like because he looks a little bit agitated, a little shake of the head there. Eighteen points in front, the black took a twenty-five points in front, so he still needs these two remaining reds. Fine judgment. He can get through to the potting angle past the other red. 49. Black and red to secure a place in the final. He's straight on the black. Well, Peter can only sit and hope. You've got a feel for him. Well, the way I look at this, it might be worth just screwing back to the side cushion and maybe attempting the, the red in the far right corner pocket. The yellow's near the pocket, which would make the pocket look a little bit big. If he tries to run round, he, it could go wrong. That's what he's decided to do. 
Well, he needed to bounce off the cushion a bit more than that. So maybe he might not even play the pot now. Maybe the snooker behind the pink. Peter will be coming back to the table. Matthew Stevens, 56. And it's not a snooker, I don't think. Should have been tight up behind the pink. Peter Ebden's looked at the scoreboard. He's 33 points behind, possible 35 left on the table. He can't play the pot on this red because he needs at least pink or black off it. It's a good safety. It's a good safety shot, is that? If he can, Stevens will want to drive the red past the green. Good kiss. Fluke the snooker. Fluke the snooker. <coughs> just looking at that down the line there, I don't know whether Peter could just get to the the thinnest edge of this red. But if he could, well, as you can see, maybe he could, but he'd only be knocking it to the left corner. And it's not the natural angle coming off this top cushion. He's going to have to play it with pace and hope for the best here. He needs a bit of luck. He needs that red to stop. He's had a bit of luck. <laughs> well, it looked a pan to a gooseberry. But that red was going to finish in a possible position. Well, Matthew's looking at the pot, Clive, and yes, I mean, if it had bounced two or three inches, it'd have been a formality match over. But he's looking at it, and I think he's going to take it on. Thin cut, just the red, and that would win the match. Overcut it. <clears throat> and left it. Peter looking, well, four shots ahead, looking to see if the the green will pass the brown. It's pretty tight. He's 33 bit points behind. He needs at least black or pink off this red. Well, he's played for the black. If what? he pots the blue, he can only tie. I think you'll have to play the blue now. Better to tie than miss the pink and these snookers and almost certainly lose the match. He's got to dig deep now. I don't know whether the yellow is just covering part of the pocket. I can't think of any other reason why Edwin wouldn't have taken the blue by now. Well, that can be the only reason, because if he misses this pink, he's out of the championship. To play that pink, knowing that if you miss it, you're out. 
that was incredible. And if he clears up here, it will rank with all the great clearances we've seen here at the Crucible Theatre. He keeps checking and checking to whether this green will pass the brown. I'm in line with it. It only just goes, but he needs to be perfect on the green. And this looks perfect. No. That's what he went. That's exactly where he wanted to be. To roll this green in. That's all he'd have to do, and he'd be on the brown. Yeah. What a shot on the pink. Ebden's looking defeat full in the face as he stood over that pink. But now he has an opportunity to close to only one behind. Perfect. Well, maybe I was a bit hasty. Not absolutely perfect. Still a little bit of work to do with the cue ball. But he's on the blue. Needs to bounce for the pink. 21. He's short. He's short at pace. Pink and black required. What a shot. 27. We could get the Ebden roar if this goes in. of the clearance which brings Ogden to only one behind Stevens leads 16-15 still one up with two to play well I don't know how you're doing at home but it's been pretty <laughs> inciting here in the studio sweaty palms all around oh. us, yeah. now John said that was the bravest pink he's ever seen played you could not believe when he took that one on well, we're both sitting here saying, whatever you do, don't go for the pink. It's just a kamikaze shot. You can see the blue. He's on the blue. He can play safe, draw. But what does he do? He cuts in a superb pink. He is the bravest shot maker out there, I must admit. And the yellow after that was a pretty decent shot as well. What an exciting frame of snooker. Absolutely fantastic. In terms of his coolness under pressure, we were all leaping up and down, but it's a, it's a testament to the man that he can keep his, hold his nerve at this stage when he knows he could just about to go out of the championship. Well, see, John Virgo's hit the nail on the head because he hasn't played really well tonight. I mean, you know, his standards have been fantastic up to this point. He'll be disappointed by his own form this evening, but where's he dragged that one up from? Mm. I mean, he's going out, he misses the ball, he's gone. He's basically out of the tournament and he's pulled a clearance out of there, that's just absolutely fantastic. How unnerving is this then for Matthew? <laughs> well, he'd be in shock because he was home and dry other than the fact that he messed up his position on the last red. He then had the frame at his mercy with the roll-up behind the pink with the last red, didn't get enough pace on it, presented uh, Peter with a chance to get back into the frame, a lifeline, and it all went sadly wrong. On two counts, Matthew Stevens should already be through to the final. A, the clearance, that he, that he really didn't get great position on the second to last red, and then all of a sudden he was in control of the table. Mm. They've both gone out to the toilet for good reason. <laughs> and how much does this remind us of the first session? Was Remember, Matthew was 3-1 up in this semi-final, but it was, it was Peter that came back to, to clear the table. It was exactly the same situation as happening now. Matthew in first, and then Peter clears up. If Matthew looks back on this and gets the video of all the game, I mean, he'll absolutely kick himself. He's been six or seven frames where he's been in control and in front. 
and in a position to win the frame and he's presented a lifeline and Peter Ebden has played so well he's actually taken them nearly on every occasion he's given them to him. If you were Matthew, what would you be thinking at this stage as you come back to, to the table knowing that you need one more? Well, you've been playing in this tournament for so long, I, I think really you want to take your brain out of gear and just play an automatic pilot. There's not a lot else you can do, but just play the ball that's presented to you. Um, obviously, you don't want to be sitting there in the uh, dressing room at half-time, but uh, they've just got to get on with the next frame. Has it shifted the balance of power in this match, John? I don't think there is any, any, any balance. I mean, he's one ahead, obviously, Matthew, but to be honest with you, at this level where the chances present themselves, Hazel, it could really be a toss of the coin. It could indeed. But young Matthew Stevens knows that he still needs to cross this line. Can he get over it in this next frame? I said a little earlier that Stevens had a reputation of being a slightly shaky clincher of winning positions. And he was certainly in a match-winning position in the last frame. <coughs> the long walk back, having left Ebden first chance, but with the black slightly protected to the other corner pocket. There is a theory that a reprieved man gets a, a new source of energy and we may see that syndrome with Ebden. Yes, there was some vital things happening in the last frame, Six. obviously the pinky potted. But to clear up like that, when you, you've been struggling, it can Seven. just give you that little feeling back. Hold on, I can still produce under pressure. But of course there was another turning point when he was snookered and he hit the red as hard as he could and he looked like it was going over the corner pocket. So maybe you could be forgiven thinking no maybe a little fate he's going to play a hand here as well because if that red had a bounce well. in the last frame just two inches off the cushion Matthew would have potted it and had been well they'd have been doing the press conference now thirteen it would be handy for Ebden keep Stevens in his chair for a good few minutes to allow him to dwell on those sort of thoughts. <coughs> They're bound to have occurred to him. Twenty. Twenty-one. It's a flat back four in the bunch, but there's no alternative but to go into them. Twenty-eight.
not dissimilar to his vital pink in the last frame. Different side of the table, same result. Okay, he's on the red to the left 34. centre. The black's available into both corner pockets. It's touching both. Touching the red closest to the cue ball, but he's firing away from it, so not a problem. If he moves it on the way back, that isn't a problem either. 35. He could have screwed back a little bit further than that. John Parrott in the studio asked the question when Peter potted the pink because I don't think he's played well to, that well tonight, Peter. Where did he get that from? Well, I'll ask it again. Where's he getting this from? He's just beginning to raise his game. Just when it matters. that red better 42. just brushed past it developed it for the right corner got another red in the left corner I'm not saying frame winning chance there's too much pressure out there and there's too much at stake and he's got to keep himself together composed but so far this is the best he's played this evening on this break Well, Stephens can see all too clearly the possibility that Ebden could win the frame at this visit. Pressure and all. Fifty. Yes, I would think he'd be thinking about a deciding frame thinking that maybe this match should have been over. That's quite natural. But he's not out of it yet. If Peter wins this frame, which he's certainly favourite to do, he's just walking around there. He's played a loose positional shot, but it's not really a problem. This red into the left corner isn't a problem. He's just got to judge the bounce off the cushion for the black. He's just, I think, walking around the table trying to compose himself. I say that, he's now taking a pressure ball into the right centre and they're all pressure at this stage of a match. Well that just shows you how his confidence has grown. He looked down and out to me. Yeah. He looks very much in it now. Black is on the spot, please, okay? Yes, he's got a new sense of purpose in his stride. He looks altogether perkier. Fifty-eight. This black and one more red, and we're almost certain to be in the 33rd frame and a decider. Red to middle. 
Yes, but it's amazing six six. you didn't play for one of the loose reds. He shouldn't miss it, but it could have been easier. It's there. 67. It's there. Well played, Peter Ebden. Seventy-four. Stevens has resigned to playing a deciding thirty-third frame. Seventy-five. By far and away, Peter Ebden's best break of the night. He only made a break over fifty prior to this, and now it looks as though it could be a big century. 82. What a turnaround! 83. <laughs> if Ebden does make the century, it will be the 60th of this championship. 91. Which will break the 1998 record of 59. 59. That in itself is an indication of the phenomenally high reliance standard 98. in this year's championship. Ninety nine played for the pink because he'd like the, the pink on his spot and all the colors on his spot. But believe me, he won't want to miss the pink, he'll want the century and the applause that goes with it. Six. <clears throat> the momentum now strongly with Ebden. The question is going to be whether he can maintain it in the deciding frame. 111. <clears throat> Stevens was in a match winning position but didn't clinch it. Twenty-five. Ebden in overdrive after struggling to find his higher gears. One hundred and thirty-one. Ebden's immaculate total clearance of one hundred and thirty-eight brings the match level. At 15 all, it's all on the decider. So, John, what do you think now? Well, I'm just amazed, Clive, at the turnaround. Uh, when Matthew Stevens led 16-14, I thought that was it. And... Uh, Sorry, 1650. 
and it was just an amazing pink that Peter had done and he just seems to have carried that confidence into this next frame and well we know what deciding frames are like you've commentated on so many it would be a toss of a coin but I agree with you maybe Ebden has just got the edge now and I think Stevens uh, may be thinking unproductively of some of the other matches that he's lost from winning positions I think that Stevens will do very well to win this Ebden's favourite in my book 16 all it's all on the 33rd frame thank you thank you deciding frame Matthew Stevens to break Possible shot to nothing. <coughs> Evan caught the attempted pot too thick. Can only be safety from Stevens here. in on the safety there from Peter and I suppose the, the yellow just slowed it down and there may be a possible sneak into the right corner here for Matthew well maybe there was and it just shows you people have been just split that yellow off the spot if they hadn't have done that cue ball would have hit the yellow and it's going to be a little run of the ball like that that could decide who's going to play Stephen Hendry in the final of this year's Embassy World Championship. Paul, the miss. Matthew Stevens, four. Missed the thin edge. And I think Matthew may say play it from there. Okay. No, he's putting it back. <coughs> well, where it was tight on the cushion, I'd have preferred that. That way. I'd have <laughs> much preferred it tight on the cushion than there. Yeah, Matthew? I don't think it was. It wasn't close to the cushion, was it? Matthew's now saying, was it closer to the cushion? To say, if it, had, if it had made Peter play it from where it was, tight under the ball cushion, this safety shot, although it's got to be caught very thin, wouldn't have been on. Matthew's having a look to see if there's a plant. He's pointing at them now. Well, they look in line, don't they? It's not a shot for nothing. He'll be careering into other reds. He won't know where the cue ball's going to go. Wow, it's amazing. He found an angle to get the cue ball back to the balk end. 
Well, he obviously had worked that out. But maybe just hit in the first red. Slightly different, so he could get back to the ball again. That knocked the plant off. Peter Ebden's going for this red. Oh. Terrific. The wind is in his sails. Peter Ebden won. This wasn't tempted by the brown in the left centre. And now let's look at the situation. I suppose the red nearest the top cushion would be the one you'd like to hit to get it safe. But because of that red on the right-hand side of the table, there's not really a path to that. He's going to do very well here, Matthew, to get this safe. Got a big problem here, magnified by the fact that this is the deciding frame and at stake a place in the World Championship final. <coughs> He's trying to get near the red, near the top cushion, but I don't see the angles on. And if he doesn't get near it, miss will be called. Foul, and miss. And taken. Peter Upton, four. Yeah. He's got to be so careful here. The red on the right-hand side of the table, maybe he's thought, well, I might be able to hit that. Yeah. Peter? I don't think he can hit the, the red nearest the top cushion, which would be the safe red. He can't get to the red on the top cushion. Foul. He cannot do miss. it. He dropped them four. But of course, I know what the rule is. There's plenty of reds there, you can hit them. But he can't just come off the side cushion and hit into them. Just because a man's got your snooker, you just can't hand the frame over to him. But yeah, I'll admit, he's got to get a little bit closer than that. He's got to have a change of mind here. But I cannot see any other red apart from the one near the top cushion that would give him a chance of getting safe. And even going this way now, I can't see it. He's coming off bolt cushion, side cushion the other side of the blue as we look and trying to find a place on this red but he's hit a red not the one he intended foul and oh miss. well he just missed it by a fraction Peter Abdon, four. <coughs> and how close have you got to be the only thing is with that line a little bit more pace, just running past the red he was closest to. He may just find this red on the top cushion. This match could hinge on this shot and Matthew getting it safe. He's got the pace. Foul and a miss. Peter Abdon, four. <coughs> He's got the line. The problem is you hit with a bit more pace and it can just slide off the cushion. He's got the line, he's found a line to hit this red near the top cushion. Shh. Is he hard enough? Is he hard enough? Oh, and a miss. Peter Epton, four. He's picked the perfect line here, as Matthew, and these are invaluable points that Peter Ebden's getting here in a deciding frame. 20 in penalties. At last, and it 
safe. <laughs> but well, you won't see many better get outs of a snooker lot than that, believe me. And as you say, Clive, most important, it's safe. He picked the line, he knew the line, and he just needed that extra bit of pace. Well played, Matthew. A bit on the brisk side. to cannon the yellow. No, he didn't mean to knock this red over this corner pocket either. But the yellow, funnily enough, may make this red missable. Well, it's certainly not easy anyway. But the yellow is just where he'd like to put his bridge hand. So he's going to be slightly hampered when he's playing this pot if he decides to take it on. But if he doesn't, can he afford to leave it there? Maybe because of that, he chooses another shot. <coughs> Not that well executed and could easily have knocked a red on for the right corner. as though red was going to go across to the right corner and was going to be possible but it settled in with the other red and those two reds near the right corner are not on rolling dead weight to nestle on these two reds. Well, I'm certain Matthew Stevens would like to have heard the words touching ball, but he's not going to hear it. Well, you see, there's a red there, but there's no value in that. Well, does he think this red goes? Surely not. He's too close to it to play it, surely. He's got an easy run off the two reds just to the right of the pink and try and find a place behind the yellow. That's got to be the shot. This can't be the shot, surely. <coughs> There's two reds in a line to the right of the pink. If he clips off one of those, and plays a cannon on the, the green, you know Peter Ebden snookered on every red. Well, this is amazing choice of shot, this is. Thin off the red and play a cannon on the green near the bulk cushion. <coughs> and 
didn't risk that. Just concentrated on covering the red near the right corner. I'm sure that's a lot better than choice than the one he was thinking of. ball in behind the yellow there as far as most reds were concerned and the one that he was most concerned about was the one nearest the right corner yes and he's covered it good safety shot required now from Matthew got to catch this red just right on the green is pretty helpful now Peter can get through to this red to the right corner as you can clearly see but to me because he's tight on the vault cushion not all he can do it's only even as he goes in off this and if he doesn't by no means certain to finish on the pink it well he hit it perfect I was thinking the red to the left he could have just flicked off that and gone in off well how would you like this pink in a deciding frame for world championship although I bet he'd rather be playing it than Peter Stevens knows that Seven. that is serious. Eight. Yes, we talk long and hard about Peter Ebden being a determined, gritty competitor. If you needed any proof, you've got it here. 16-14, he looked down and out. He produced a little bit of magic. And now looks on course. It'd be very difficult to suggest he'd win the frame at this visit. I'm certain 30. Matthew isn't looking at it that way. But with those foul points that Matthew gave away, doesn't leave Peter with that much to do to build a 60, 70 point lead. And that's a big lead in a deciding frame. It's a strange choice of shot for me, this. I, I presume he's thinking if he pots this red, it clears the corner pocket for the pink later. Waiting for the pink in the middle. Okay. 40. But if you overrun it slightly, it's not, not the best positional shot. But he seems to be thinking clearly, so he'd be a better judge than me.
20. Red to left corner looks a natural angle to come through the gap and bounce up onto the pink. Stevens 38 behind and kind of wondering whether he's going to get another shot the position of the remaining reds gives him some encouragement that he will at the moment as if he's going to be at least 50 behind if and when he gets back to the table. 27. He used those 20 points he gave away in fouls when he was trying to escape from that very difficult snooker. I think he's certainly going to play a part in this frame. Peter's having a look which red he can play for after the red, pink, maybe could go up for the blue. You'd favour the blue here, really. If you got a nice angle on the blue, you could do a lot more things than off the pink. And that's why he's gone out for the blue. He's run a little bit too far, but he's in control. I think he may have to play a cannon, though. I don't think he can just drop onto a red here. I don't think at the moment there's anything available into the right corner. So he'll trust a little bit to look. Can he get any? You'd settle for that, wouldn't you? It was a good shot, control cannon, and the perfect Perfectly. result for Peter Ebden. Not about 50 points in front, Clive. I think he could be nearer 70. He's opened a nice few reds here. 34. Seven points in front. Then the pink will put him 64 points in front. But because of those fouls, there'll still be a possible 83 left on the table. So he still needs 41. Well, a couple more reds at least. But I think he's got a red to the right corner. And as I said, a few moments ago he's just showing his tremendous competitive instinct and produced his best form <coughs> certainly of this evening's session at just the right time 47 still needs red color red Well, Matthew, 
Are you going to get another chance? It's down to Peter Ebden, whether he does. The blue puts him 70 points in front. Unusual circumstances, but it's because of those 20 points in fouls that Matthew gave away. The 70 points won't be enough because he's still 75 left on the table. Pink now, and still that one more red needed. Had two chances there. 54. His preferred option was the <coughs> one third right of picture. If he wasn't on that, he'd have had a shot at the one along the cushion. But this is effectively match ball. What a great effort. That ball in itself, not all that difficult. But what a titanic effort in this deciding frame from Peter Ebden. And what a heartbreak for Matthew Stevens, who was within a ball of victory at 16-14. 72 in front. 55. Comprehensively snooted. It looks like Ebden through to the final. Yes, you got a feel for Matthew. I'm sure he thought he was in the final when he looked as though he was going to win 17-14. But if he misses this red now, I think he'll call it a day. Well, good hit. But he's left a chance of a red along the top cushion. This is a cruel game, Snooker. He's got a great future, Matthew. But I don't think in the immediate future, he's going to be in the final of this championship. This man is, and what a performance. Pulled himself up from his bootlaces. He looked down and out to me. I'm still a little bit shocked. One shot changes, of course. A wonderfully courageous pink from his last red. One. In the 31st frame, she went on to win with a cool clearance. Then came a total clearance of 138 to level the match. Yep. And now Ebden, barring something almost unthinkable, is in the final. Yes, considering everything, Matthew Stevens potted a tremendous ball there, but he's got to pot everything now. Every time he, well, if he misses, he shakes hands and concedes. And that was a tremendous shot. He needs two snookers if he was to get high-value colours. I say high-value colours because he doesn't necessarily need a black off these reds. He's just looking at the scoreboard. 64 points behind. Eight. Possible 59 left on the table. So he could play for the pink here. Nine. Fifteen. Another glance at the scoreboard. Can afford another pink. To still need two snookers. Another good pot. 
you've got to admire this man, this young man's courage. What must be going through his mind, but he's still pulling out the good pots. And another sensational pot, a kiss on the green would help, and he's got one. 22. 50 behind, only 43 left. As I say, two snookers, pot this red, pot the black. And then he can play his snooker. Well, Stevens yesterday lost a frame from 73 in front. He came to the table 72 behind. Surely it couldn't happen that he could snatch frame and match out of the fire. think he's good can lose this frame and match. It's a little bit careless of Matthew to leave himself using the spider here. Snooker behind the black is what he wants. Matthew Stevens, 30. Pretty too hard, it's not a snooker. I'm sure it would have been had he left himself slightly differently on that red and able to use a hand bridge or even the ordinary rest. Well, he's given this a lot of thought, Peter. It's hard to know why. I'm sure he can get through to hit this red. If he can't, it'd be easy to come off the port cushion with a with a right hand side, or easy to swerve slightly. Well, he can clearly hit the red. points in front, 35 left, so two snookers required. Only one if you could get a snooker in the free ball. And that's it. Over. That was half a chance, that, to get in behind the yellow. rolled the red over the pocket, inviting Stevens to pot it. The theory being that as soon as the red goes down, Stevens couldn't get a possible eight extra points by means of a free ball. One. Yes, and he's taking that opportunity. Now it's very, very important here where he finishes with the cue ball. ball needs to travel. Not far enough. Eight. <coughs> it's 
not there. Back of Stevens, eight. Tight up behind the brown. Possibility. Well, he went for the red down the cushion a few moments ago. I'm sure this yellow is worth a, a try. It's almost tight on the cushion. If he hits the yellow and the cushion together, he's fancy him potting this. And there's still two snookers required. Three if this went in. Well, there's a little bit of applause, but that can't be the right shot to play. The, the green was tight on the top cushion, and you could not possibly snooker behind it. Now he's brought it in the table. Matthew's got five colours to snooker behind. Still needs two snookers, but at least there's another option. I think he's too far away from the yellow to... Get behind the green. This shot. Tried to get behind the blue. would have put Stevens to three snookers needed. That could be Matthew Stevens' last shot. He nearly got behind the green, but he's left the yellow on. Got to watch the end off. Dear me, that was close. Too close for comfort. Two. Ebden checks the scoreboard. Stevens needs three snookers. going to end in disappointment. A big one. He dread them too. He's won it. Matthew Stevens. Well, 36 points behind, only 25 on the table. Three snookers required. Can't blame him for trying. But it looks an impossible task. tried to get in behind the black but I think that Stevens needing three snookers would probably have thrown the towel in had it been any frame other than the World Championship semi-final decider <laughs>